Welcome back to the Godot Retro Text Adventure tutorial. It's been a second since I've recorded a video for this series, but I'm excited to get a couple more out there just to round out this tutorial series and make sure that y'all have everything you need to make your own Retro Text Adventure games and expand on this tutorial as much as you might want. As a quick note, ever since Godot 3.4, a new native class has been added to the engine called Room. So previously in this tutorial, we've been using the class name Room to refer to our rooms in our game. We're gonna have to change that now because in Godot 3.4, that's a reserved keyword. So in order to do that, you'll see I've got Room up here. You'll see this air popping out everywhere. The class Room shadows a native class. We're gonna have to change it. And the way I'm gonna do it, and you can give it whatever name you want, but I'm just gonna call it Game Room instead of room so I'll change the class name within our room script so it'll be game room you're also going to want to change your seam name from room to game room and then you're also going to want to change the references to room everywhere else in your code you can also change your room scripts file name so just as a heads up we're not going to get to that in this video because I recorded this back in 3.3 in the same with the next video but just wanted to point this your way so that if you're seeing this error you know how to fix it so toward that end, let me go through the changes I've made off camera just to expedite this video a bit. And it's really just adding rooms that round out my own game's world. So I've kind of talked a little bit, you know, I had the shed room and the outside room, just kind of rooms that were placeholders. But now I've kind of I've finished all the rooms that I want and have made a plan for an actual story, an actual sequence of events for our game. So the way it's going to work now is you wake up in a shed. Down here you can see um, you're going to start off in a shed. And this shed is going to be behind an inn, and so you can go up to the back of the inn, you'll see there's a door to the inn there, but it's going to be locked. And so you can actually, this door north into the inn's kitchen to the back of the inn is locked, but we're actually going to add a new, a new exit key, which is path. So you can say go path, and there will be a path from the back of the inn that takes you to the village square. From the village square, you can go to the inn door, enter the inn. There will be an innkeeper there you can talk to to get some valuable information. You can also go to the inn's kitchen and unlock the door at the back of the inn so you can move freely between the back of the inn and the inn itself. So we'll keep our locking and unlocking functionality there and keep our item using. But I'm also going to add NPCs in a future video where we'll just have a way to talk to an NPC and they'll give you some basic information. But it's not going to end there. We're also going to have a way where you can win the game, just again, trying to provide a small win condition, where you can win the game by going out of the town and escaping or leaving the town and getting out to the forest. Except in your way is a guard who won't let you go through unless you recover something he lost. And so we're not only going to add NPCs you can just talk to, we'll add a give command where you can give an item and doing that will unlock something for you. It'll be like a, an unofficial quest system. So that's all that we're going to add in the next few videos. But I just wanted to go through and show kind of the progression of the game that I've developed here and that'll make more sense for the changes that we'll make in the rest of this video. So what we actually want to do in this video is a couple things. We want to rework our exit system a bit so that it's a little bit more robust. And we also want to provide ways where we can override the names of exits so we can define custom exits in both directions that the player will type in to move between them. So in order to do that, let's go to our room manager script here. And you'll notice I've replaced all of the code that I used to have here with code that matches our new game layout. So you'll start in the shed because it's first in our room manager. You can go west to the back of the inn. At the back of the inn, you can go along the path. But right now, the way that the game is set up, this is going to throw an error because if you go to our room script, you'll remember we only had the cardinal directions. Fortunately, our system is really easy to add new ones to so that won't be an issue but we'll have to do that so we'll have to add a path key here and then from the back of the inn you can go to the village square the village square will have three different exits to the inn to the gate and then also to a field where we'll recover the guard's lost item if you go to the inn door you can get inside the inn if you go inside the inn you can get into the kitchen and then from the kitchen you'll see we have this connect exit lock to the back of the inn and we'll also have the key in the kitchen there just to make sure that's working and then you'll also see that our gate to the north of town has a locked exit to the forest we won't actually provide a key to unlock this we'll unlock it by giving the guard back his item but what would be really cool 
is we don't always want to have directions. You know, we can make, instead of saying west, east, north, it's just hard to remember for the player. So having something like path, or I had for the indoor here, you can go inside or outside. That makes it really easy and clear from the name of the direction what the player is going to do. But what if we could have even better ones there where it wasn't the same both ways. So here we can make it so that inside automatically has the reverse of outside, which is nice. It would be great if by default, the game would try and provide a matching exit on the other side, but it would be perfect if we could have an easy way to override what the, the reverse exit name would be to make it nice for the player. So that way, if we wanted to have the exit from the gate to go out into the forest be forest, but then back to be gate, but we didn't want to lock it in so every time we had a gate or forest in our game, it would have to be these two. We wanted to provide an override. Well, we could do that pretty easily by just changing some of the code in our room connection script. So that's all the stuff we're gonna do is just beef up how our room exits work in this video. So first let's add path and inside because these are two new keys for our exits that we have. So if I go into our room script, which is where we do the connections, I'll do path first. So I think if we do path, we really just want, and let me just copy this right line here. So I'm gonna add a new key for path. And I think what we really want here is it to just be path on both ways. If you go from one, one part of the path to the next room, you can take that same path to get back. So I think just having path on both sides of the exit here makes sense. But let's also do inside and outside here. So we'll see if I do inside, then we can do room exits and change this to be outside. So if you are inside, you'll go to the outside on the flip side of that. And remember, we had to do west and east and north. We have to do all the opposite directions above so we'll do the same for outside here just so that if we ever add a room in the future that is going from outside to in and not inside to outside the game will handle that automatically so this is really nice we can run our game and make sure it works and we're going to have a default system where the game is trying to help us out as much as it can by just automatically providing exits so it saves the work that we have to do so that's really great but again like we said it'd be great if we could provide an override and if you're, again, if you're making this game on your own, you can add all sorts of things like portal. You know, if say you wanted to have a portal or something like that, that was just a portal on both sides. You see how easily expandable the system is. It's pretty robust and it's easy to use. We just want to provide a way to override that second room name if necessary. I'm going to get rid of the portal here. So before we get into that, let's actually start our game. And because we don't yet have a way, an override name for our second room, let's just comment out this line right here and we'll start our game. Okay, so you'll see we're in a shed, and also during this whole thing, you'll just see a lot of text. Because this is a text adventure game, it makes sense, you know, you'd expect to see a ton of text in your game. Um, so I think that's okay, but it would be really nice if we had different colors and different font sizes or ways that made the text easier to read and parse without having to go back and read every word. So that's something we'll do in a future video too, is add some colors and a little bit of different styles to our text output just to make it a little bit easier on the player. But you can see we start in a shed, and if I say go west, we'll be in the back of the inn. If I try going north, this is the locked exit. You'll see that we can get through because right now, our locks, we're locking the south exit of our kitchen, but not the north exit of the back of the inn. So this is something I did in that previous video when we did locked exits, where I made a separate room one and room two is locked variable. One thing we're gonna do in this video is actually get rid of that and just make it so there it just is locked, is an exit locked and it's locked from both sides. I know in the video when we did that, I gave some reasons why this was a good idea. And it is a good idea. You might want to keep it for your game if you want to have one-way locks. But for the sake of this, we'll just redo it and redo the code here so that it's locked both ways. I kind of wish I would have just done that at the start, but I, I think I thought it was a good idea to do this then, which is totally fine. That's how development works. You iterate as you go. But anyway, so if we go back to our game, we can try and make sure that our new movement commands work. So if I go west, we'll now see that one of the exits here is a path. So if I say go path, when I do this, we should be in the village square and we should see that there's another exit also called path that will take us back to the uh, back of the inn. And you'll see that works. We're now in the village square and we do have an exit that's path. So if I say go path, we're back at the back of the inn. So this is good. It seems like our new movement, things are working right. And if I go back to path and then let's try the village or the inn entrance so if i go east to the inn we'll see we're in the indoor and now i can just say go inside 
And I think go inside is way easier to understand and just a better player experience than saying go east when you actually go inside. So this will be go inside. And now if I wanna go back outside, I can say go outside. So there you go, simple change, but it just kind of makes a nicer player experience. It's a little bit more clear where our directions are going and the player doesn't have to keep reading through the wall of text that they have just to remember what they need to type to go where they wanna go. I know that kind of thing was popular in the 80s and 90s, but it's 2021 at the time of recording and we can do a little bit better. So now that we have that, let's actually revamp in our connect exit function so that we can add an override for our second room's exit name. So I'm back in our exit manager and it's this line right here where we want to pass in a third parameter which can be our override name for an exit. So I can get rid of these two comments here because we do know how to handle path and inside but this comment here, this is what we're trying to get rid of. We don't want this to throw an error which you see it's throwing or whoops the error is actually just because I typed that wrong but we don't want this to throw an error when we run our game because it can't handle a string as our parameter here. So if we go into room we'll see that in our connect exit functions, we only take two parameters now, the direction and the room. So what we can do is add to both of these a room to override name. And you can call this what you want. I just want to be really specific. So room to override name is kind of a weird thing, but it, it clearly says this is the override name that you're gonna use for room two. And the thing is we want this to be an optional parameter. We don't want the player to have to specify this. So we can just set it to something clearly optional, clearly not intentional, like null. This, you know, you can change it to be something else if you want. But what we'll do then below is check whether this override name is null. And if so, then we will not have an override name. We'll try and use a default name. I'm gonna add this to our connect exit locked function too, just to make sure that it's uh, possible to pass in for locked and unlocked exits. So this is good, we've got this for both of our functions now, but what we need to do is actually pass this into connect exit, which means we need to edit the function or the parameters that get passed into connect exit. So I'm gonna add another optional parameter at the end here, after is locked, which is just gonna be room to override name. And again, we'll just make this a default parameter here because we don't have to pass it in, but what we'll do is in our two connect exit functions, we will add our room to override name as, in, as a parameter that we are passing in into both of these. And again, it's just gonna be the parameter name itself. We don't pass it in. So just again, as in to explain what we're doing here, we're adding an optional parameter to both of our public connect exit functions, and we're gonna default it to null so that the player doesn't, or the developer really doesn't have to pass it in, but you can if you want. We're gonna add that same optional parameter to connect exit. Of course, we are always gonna be passing it in because this is a private function, so it's only gonna get called from these two functions up above, the other two connect exits. So we will always be passing it in, but we'll keep it as an optional with the same default value here just to make it line up with everything else. And so now that we have this, we can actually add some code that will determine whether we need to override our name or use our default matching name system. And in order to do that, we can just add a new line, line 72. So after we do our things with our exit directions up here, now we can say if room to override name does not equal null. So we only wanna do this if there is an actual override name that's been specified and it's not just the default parameter of null. Now what we can do is say, it's just, and this is gonna be the same line of code that we see down here, except we're gonna dynamically create it rather than hard coding in the property name or the key name for that exit. So it's gonna be room.exits, and then inside of the brackets here, we're gonna pass in room to override name equals exit. So what we're doing is saying, we're already connecting the exit for the direction the player spec or the developer specifies in this line, on line 71. But what we're doing down here is saying, hey, if there's an override name for room two, we're gonna explicitly connect the exit on that room to be the override name. And now what we can do then is we don't want to do the rest of this match statement if there's an override. So what we can do is say else here, and then we will indent all of this, including our error at the bottom, because we only want this error to be printed if the developer does not provide an override name and the name that they try and pass in is not one of our automatic matching ones. It's basically an error saying, hey, you didn't provide an override and you haven't used one of our pre-built matching directions so you either have to add it or you've made a mistake 
So this is good. We can go back to our room manager now and I can get rid of this comment here because what should happen is our game will recognize now that this third parameter here is actually a string key for the reverse side of our gate exit. So if we wanna go from the forest back to the gate, this is what we have to do. Now, we won't be able to see this while the exit's locked because we have no way to unlock it. But if I unlock this and we go up to our forest, so I'll do that by going west, go path, go north. I uh, just, you know, I made all these so I know where we're going. Now I can say go forest and the reverse of this should be go gate. And now we see there's our exit, go gate. So on one hand we have go forest and then on the other we have go gate. And this brings us back to the town gate. And we were able to doing this without actually hard coding gate and forest as a pair of directional names in our room. So rather than having to hard code gate and forest here within our match statement, we're able to just pass in an override and let the game handle it itself. So we've just added a really nice layer of flexibility for us as developers to make our game and continue making rooms going forward is now we're able to provide exits that have whatever name we want on both side of the exits. Yet at the same time, for most of our basic rooms where we don't care about the exit name and we just want it to be what we would expect, like east and west, etc., we can just let the game handle that too. So a nice layer of flexibility that keeps all of our underlying just additional help to the developer in place underneath. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna do in this video that I mentioned before is revamp our exits a little bit so that it is locked both ways and not just one. So RIP to the code that I wrote in a previous episode. I'm not sure exactly why I wanted to do that, but we'll just get rid of it here. So I'm gonna get rid of that room two is locked variable and our room one is locked variable and replace it with a new variable just is locked. This is gonna be a Boolean, which will default to false. Again, just a refresher on this syntax here with the colon equals, that's just telling Godot to automatically infer what the type is. It's the same as saying Boolean, except now I'm letting Godot determine what the type is by whatever default value I provide. So because false is a Boolean value, Godot is gonna know by default, okay, this is a Boolean value is locked. So that's what the colon equals syntax does. So now that we have this, we don't actually need this is other room locked function here. All we have to do is just access our is locked property. So if something's locked, we just ask is locked. That's all we have to do. So this is way simpler, but we are gonna need to make a few edits around here. So one place that we'll need to do it is in our room script. So if we come over here, we'll see in the connect exit function, we are doing, or we're looking at our room two is locked variable. Again, we want this to just be is locked. So now we're just gonna set whether the entire exit itself, both ways is locked just by the is locked variable that we were already passing in to our private connect exit function here. So this doesn't change anything functionally, it's just changing the variable name that we're looking at, which is nice. But the place we're really gonna need to change things is in our command processor, because that's where we're taking a look at whether the exit the player is trying to go to is locked. So if we come back to our command processor, you'll see that within our go function here, we have a check saying, okay, so if the current room has an exit that matches the second word the player, ent or the player entered, then we look for that exit, and then we ask, is this other room locked? And then we say the exit's currently locked. But remember, now all we have to do is check whether the exit itself is locked. So I'll just change this to be the is locked property, because it's a Boolean, we can just say if exit is locked. Look how nicely this line reads. It's totally clear what this code is doing if exit is locked. And one thing I was thinking about, another way that we can improve the text to our player just to help it out a bit, is we can actually change it from saying that exit is currently locked to maybe something like telling the player the direction they're trying to go is locked. So maybe if we replace exit here with percent %s, and this is just some string interpolation if you've never used this before. It's just common, I think the syntax is really from C. I'm sure there's a language before that, but that's where this syntax comes from. Percent %s just means the percent tells the Godot interpreter that it needs to be replaced. Well, I guess we've already done this a bit, but I'll just refresh again. The percent tells the Godot interpreter that this needs to be replaced with a value that's later on in this line of code, and s indicates that it'll be a string value. So we can do percent, and then here we will just say second word. So it'll be better if we say something maybe like the way to the blank is currently locked. So if it's to the north, it'll be the way to the north is currently locked. It won't work as well for something like the way to the path or the way outside is locked. Maybe we can actually just change it and be 
the way blank is currently locked. So the way north is currently locked, the way south is currently locked, the way outside is currently locked. If you have something like path, so the way path is currently locked, that's not gonna really make sense, but I think this is still a little bit better than what we had before. So let's save that, and in your own game, if you're frustrated with that syntax, you can find a system to um, maybe be a little bit more dynamic about what text is printed out here, but we'll just do that for now. And now what we're doing is we're just checking whether the room is locked. And I think that might be all we have to do, except in our use function here, we have to actually change the code that's happening when we use a key. So now we're saying, when we use a key, we're checking for the exit that matches that, and we're checking if exit equals the item's use value. And this is, remember, we added a use value to an item, and this is how we were determining whether the item was, this key was unlocking the current room. We were looking at the room two on the exit. But I think we can just change this exit, or we can change the use value to not be a specific room, but to be the exit itself. So we'll come back down here in a second. Let's actually change that first so I can explain to you what I'm talking about. So if you look at our item, it's just got a use value, right? This can be anything. And if we go to our room manager, you'll see that we are setting our keys use value to be the back of the end. We're setting it to be a room. But what if we could just set it to be an exit itself? In order to do that, we'd actually have to be able to get a certain exit, which we aren't doing right now. But we could do pretty easily by just returning whatever exit is created by our connect exit functions. So let's try doing that. If we come down to our room, we can just look for our connect exit, and then we can just have these return an exit. So what I'll do is just add a line at the end of this function. Let me get rid of the indents here. And we'll just say return exit. And now this private function is going to return an exit, but it means that we have to return it from all of our public connect exit functions. So again, I can just say return connect exit function. And these are just going to return the return values of this private connect exit function. So now very easily our connect exit functions are returning an exit. What that means is that in our room manager, we can actually get the return value of any of these. So now if we want our key to unlock the exit between the back of the inn and the inn kitchen, now what I can actually do is connect or get the return value of this connect exit lock. So I can say variable exit. And now I can actually change it so that the keys use value, I'm gonna copy and paste line seven here. So I'll just cut it and then add it down here. So now I can say the keys use value is this exit. So just to recap, we are getting the locked exit between the kitchen and the back of the inn. We are setting our keys use value to be that exit, and then we're adding the key to the kitchen. So the keys use value being the exit is good. We just actually need to change our command processor code now to actually look for the exit rather than the room. So if I go back to our command processor and look at the line that we were looking at before we took that detour, now instead of saying if exit.room2 equals or is the item's use value, we can just ask whether the exit itself is the item's use value. Because remember, we changed the use value to line up with the exit. So we're just checking now, does, is this the exit that the item is meant to unlock? And if so, we change the exit, not just room two is locked, but now just exit is locked to be false. So there we go, we now have code that is actually unlocking an entire exit from both sides, which means the exit is gonna be locked from both sides if you lock it. And I think for most games, this is gonna be a better system than the way the code was before. So sorry that I didn't do this at the start. I, uh, I, I definitely had some good reasons for it, but just in retrospect, I think this is better. And I just wanted to show for all of you who might wanna implement it like this, how you might do that. Now there's one other slight thing I wanna change and then we'll be able to test it and make sure it all works. And you'll notice that in line 97 here, right under the code we just changed, we have a message that print out, prints out when the player unlocks something. It says, you use a key, for example, to unlock a door to the back of the kitchen. The problem is that the, ex the room name that's gonna be printed out here is always hard-coded a room too. So take our back of the inn and the inn kitchen example. If we take our key from the kitchen and instead of unlocking the door there, we go all the way back around to the back of the inn and then we unlock it, the text here is gonna say, you unlock a door to the back of the inn. 
but you're unlocking it from the back of the inn. And that's not gonna make a total amount of sense. I mean, it's it's totally fine. So this isn't something we need to change. But again, I think just for a player experience and making the game feel better, luckily we have a function that gets the other room from the current room. So what we can actually do in our exit, you'll see we have this get other room function. So in our command processor, we can actually change this to be exit get other room. Again, this is that function that we have on exit and we're gonna pass in our current room, which we just have that variable up there called current room. You'll see that, remember, this is the room that we're getting, exit in current room here. So we'll get the, get the other room from the current room and then get the room name of that room. So now if we unlock our door from the in kitchen, it'll say you unlock a door to the back of the inn. But if we unlock it from the back of the inn, what it's gonna say is you unlock a door to the in kitchen. And it's the same exit, it's the same door that we're unlocking, but for the player, it's just gonna make more sense and help them understand that the door they just unlocked, where it goes to. So I think this is a really nice change that'll just make it easy and more flexible for us to keep adding more locked rooms going forward. All right, so let's test it out and make sure it works. So if I go west, now I'm at the back of the inn. If I try to go north, it'll tell me that the way north is locked. So if I go into the inn, go path, go east, go inside, go south. Sorry, I've got all the, all the directions memorized. Now we're in the inn's kitchen. So this is the door that's locked to the back of the inn. If I say go south, it says it's locked too. So it's now locked both ways. So that's an improvement from what we had before. But if I take the key, I can try unlocking this. So if I say use key, it'll say the key to, or use the key to unlock a door to the back of the inn. This is perfect. So this is exactly what we wanted, but it's what we had before. What we really need to test is that if I take the key back to the back of the inn and try and unlock the door there, that it'll give me a text that says you unlock a door to the inn's kitchen. So let me run the game again and I'll fast forward to that moment. Okay, so I went inside to the inn's kitchen and got the key and I came all the way back around. So I'm at the back of the inn and you'll see if I try to go north, it's locked, but if I say use key, remember now the key is gonna be checking for the exit itself, not the specific room on the other side. So if I say use key, it'll say you use a key to unlock, well, I should say a key, but whatever. You use key to unlock a door to the inn's kitchen. It's the same door, but now it's telling us where we've unlocked it to, where it's going. So again, this is just a really small change that I think makes a big difference for user experience. Alrighty, we did a lot of small kind of code heavy things, but I hope this has been helpful. Thanks so much for watching this episode. It's good to be back in the series. If you found my work helpful, a like and subscribe to support the channel is always appreciated. We'd love to have you in our Discord server. The link to that is in the description below. You can ask any questions you may have there. And if you do find my work helpful, you can donate a coffee to me on Buy Me A Coffee. Link to that is also in the description below. That helps me continue to make great videos. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.